Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another YouTube video and today we are going to be doing the 4.3 Spiral Abyss using Al Haytham who is insane for the first half and the kind of like the main focus for this video as well as Ayaka on the second half. So if you guys enjoy this video be sure to like and subscribe, the support on the channel recently has been great so thank you for all that and without further ado let's just get right into it. So as I said we will be trying to focus more on Al Haytham today because we already did a video using Ayaka and Farina, so, you know, Al Haytham today is going to be the star of the show, especially because he clears the Hydro Tulpa, which is floor 12, chamber 3, first half, incredibly quickly. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a, I, sorry, an Al Haytham Quicken team. Normally I would have Fischl here instead of Cookie, but because we will, this will turn into a Hyper Bloom team in chamber 3, we will be using Cookie here instead. I'm just putting Zhongli in here for the comfort. If you're feeling really confident, you could swap this out for someone like a Nahida, a Karara, a Baiju, it just, you know, or like a Fischl or a Beidou. It all depends up to you how you feel more comfortable. I just think this is easy and I don't use Zhongli in the second half, so, you know, I can just turn my brain off if I put him in the first half. And on the second half, as I said, we are going to be using an Ayaka team with Farina, which looks a little bit like this. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, and here we are in the first half of the first chamber. We do get an ER card, which can be useful for our Al Haytham and our Ayaka. You know, even though we have quite a bit of ER on the both of them, and it should be enough, you know, it's always nice to have some extra ER just in case. I just like being comfortable when I play. Anyway, starting off with our rotation, we unfortunately miss our first half of mirrors, but it's fine. We should be able to still get five procs instead of six, and I think that might be enough to get him to half HP anyway. For him to summon his little minions, although I'm not too sure. Uh, energy should be fine when we go back onto him. The thing is, this team isn't his ideal team. We have neither Yao Yao nor are we using someone like Fischl. Although not using Fischl is an intentional choice because Cookie will come in really handy in the last chamber. But yeah, it would be better to have someone like Baiju or Nahida because it would just boost our Hyphen's damage here a bit. So this is actually a very free-to-play friendly team. Honestly, I could go for someone like Carrera, uh, sorry, Carrara or... To be fair, I could even go Fischl instead of Zhongli, but I just like going Zhongli for the comfort because, you know, the final boss kind of hits hard, so... I mean, obviously if you don't have Zhongli, you can go Carrara. She has a really strong shield. You could go Beidou for damage reduction. She's really good for the first two chambers because she's better in AoE, especially if you have a C2, I believe it is. Okay, so we are also able to get the boss down here, so we should be able to just basically kill him here. Should be fine. Just, you know, finish him off with our ult a little bit. Obviously, I am doing the little trick where you switch... After I hate from ult, you quickly switch to your Electro character. So that they have more quick enough time. So, that's a tip if you don't know. Although, it might be a bit difficult to pull off in high ping. When I was abroad on holiday, I could not do it. So, yeah. Okay, he does waste our time a bit here. But, yeah, considering how this team could be improved a lot... Sorry, how... Considering how that team could be improved upon a lot, I think that was a pretty decent run. Now, you will be familiar with the footage from this video if you watched my uh, Farina and Ayaka video. But, yeah, this guy can be of a, a bit of a pain, which is why we are running her on Marisha Say instead of on um, Blizzard Strayer, as you normally would, just so we can get more credit against bosses, because, you know, there's... This guy, he can be a bit of a pain if you don't, you know, play around him. You know, this is, Yoimiya is currently on banner as of recording the audio for this, so if you're, if this boss really annoys you, you can go for Yoimiya, because she is, Yoimiya is literally the best at clearing the annoying bosses in the game. Like, if you want one character who will help you through annoying bosses, it's Yoimiya. Anyway, we will be able to clear this just about, um... Yeah, see, I am glad we did get that energy recharge buff because, again, the comfort just helps out a lot here. We do have to be careful not to die, otherwise that would be quite unfortunate. And then just throw our Ayaka burst because, you know, okay, half of it misses. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, that's the one annoying thing when you can't freeze enemies. Ayaka's burst just running off by itself is, uh, yeah, not ideal. But, you know, this was a pretty easy clear. I think you wouldn't expect Ayaka to be good, this good against the Thunder Manifestation, but she was, so... On to the second chamber now. Okay, and it is second chamber time. Now the thing is, this chamber isn't... Like, this chamber is just kind of annoying with how the enemies spawn in. I would much rather if it was like 2 and 2 instead of 1, 1 and 2. So, yeah, that's not ideal. We just have to hope that we can one-cycle this guy. 
I mean, he moves around a lot, so pro tip, don't let him run towards, like, the middle of the arena or whatever. Actually, what do you guys even call the abyss? Is it just an arena? Do you guys just call it the arena? Because when I see it, I just think of an arena. Anyway, yeah, we are we're not able to one-cycle him. I'm sure if you have Nahida here, or maybe even Baiju, and, like, another sub-DPS, you probably could. I mean, the Ruin Grader should be easier to take down. Or Ruin Guard, rather, sorry. I Honestly, there's so many enemies in this game, I sometimes forget their names. I remember, like, Treasure Hoarder, Hilly Chal, and that's about it, so, yeah. But yeah, luckily these guys aren't that bad, especially with Zhongli. We can just tank a lot of these hits. That's what I like about playing Alhyphen with Zhongli. It's just Zhongli will tank a lot for you, and you can stay on so, sorry, you can stay on Alhyphen for like as long as you want, basically. Yeah, we're doing pretty good damage here. It is nice that we're able to group them up and our mirrors proc on both of them. Otherwise, that would be a bit problematic. But yeah, we will be able to clear this in 90 seconds as well. And the biggest challenge for us will come in the last chamber. Although, to be fair, not really. I actually think the last chamber is probably the easiest one in this abyss. Unless you're not playing Hyper Bloom in the second half. But, you know, more on that later. Instead, we need to finish the second half of floor 2. Or chamber 2, rather, sorry. So, the basically the main reason why we brought uh, Kaza here is for the grouping for this chamber. Just because it is, you know, otherwise we wouldn't really be able to destroy these Geo Shields if we didn't have the fact that Plunge could destroy it. So, you know, he... Kaza is just really useful. I do wish I had Kaza on my upper account just because I love playing Kaza so much. He's just such a useful character. Now, dude, th these enemies just always annoy me with how much they just separate from each other. So, okay, now we can freeze them in place with Mika, which is nice. But, yeah, those enemies are quite annoying with how much poise or knockback or whatever it is. Like, look, this guy's just not an Anika's best anymore. Which is why it's really important to have a lot of uh, freeze uptime on them. Otherwise, they can get annoying. Like, if you ever try playing Zhao with them, not that I have Zhao because I unfortunately lost my 50-50. But, when he comes out next, we will be getting Zhao video on that. And it will be one of the... Biggest on my channel, so be sure to subscribe for that. Anyway, I framing these guys just because, you know, they're silly and we can dodge their hits. And freeze. Now, all we have to do is hope that we don't get absolutely annihilated as soon as we come out of our burst. And we don't. And just dash around a bit. Took some damage there, but it's fine. Yeah, these guys will are pretty easy to take down, honestly. You don't even need Geo on this half to take them down. Like, if their shield's up, sure, they might have a bit more resistance. At least I think that's how that works, but... Yeah, they just go down easy. Just a couple of charge attacks here. And the ult. And it's easy. There you go. And we have so much energy, we can be forgiven for using our ult. But yeah, anyway, now it's on to the final chamber. And this is where this team should really shine. And we even get an EM buff. And EM will not only boost our Haven's damage, it will boost our Cookie's Hyper Booms as well. Which is the whole reason why we brought Cookie over someone like Fischl. Because they literally make this floor... So easy, especially with Zhongli. Now, also, you might want to pick up the Crystallized Shards in the current Abyss as of recording this. That will give you, you know, the blessing in the Abyss is to do with um, Crystallized Shards and it will help you do more damage, but yeah. Anyway, as you can see, this guy's HP bar is just getting melted. I tried doing this half with Ayaka originally, and in this amount of, like, to get this much health took me like two minutes with Ayaka, so... This team absolutely destroys the Hydro Tulpa. With, with Alhaven damage and Hyper Bloom damage, it's, the damage on this team is insane against the Hydro Tulpa. Like, if there's any enemy with Hydro Infusion, Alhaven Hyper Bloom teams just destroy them. To be fair, Alhaven Farina teams, if you've seen that video I've recorded, they are insane. They are some of my favorite teams to play in this game. Like, as much as I love just destroying things with Nivellet Farina, I might honestly prefer Alhaven Farina just because it's so easy against every single type of enemy in this game. It literally took us a minute. Like, it, we could have honestly cleared that in faster than a minute, and that's not even with Alhaven's best team. That's how insane this team is. And this half is incredibly easy as well with Ayaka. Because if you have Kaza and Ayaka, it just kills this chamber, basically. So again, just iframe these guys. Easy. And then just... To be fair, I probably shouldn't have altered that. I will put just more... Electro uptime on them, but oh well. Just gonna make sure we don't die. That's the one thing about this chamber. Just don't die to these guys, and then you're basically fine if you're using Ayaka. Like, now all you have to do is just get Farina buff, group the enemies up along with their summons, and then you basically win. So, like I said, this floor 12 is like chamber 3 is incredibly easy. Like, I actually couldn't believe how easy we could. The fact that I struggled more on the first chamber and the second chamber than the third chamber. 
It was crazy to me because this was my first try attempt. Like, actually. So, look, there you go. And we basically clear Chamber 3 in two minutes without. Like, our characters aren't built amazingly. And we just face 6 star easily. I honestly think this Abyss is one of the easiest if you have Dendro. Literally, Hyper Boom teams just do so much damage to the Hydro Tulpa that it's basically all you need. You can just run whatever Hyper Boom team and then just a strong team on the second half. And then you're basically done. You can really easily do this as a free to play. So, yeah, this Abyss, very easy to face 6 star if you have Aika and Al Haytham. But yeah, now with that being said, uh, let's just get into ca the character build and outro the video. Alright, so when it comes to our character builds, if I'm being honest, our Al Haytham really isn't the best. He has just a 1.1k attack and 500 EM, which is kind of standard. 65 crit, 111 crit damage, and then 130 ER. I'd say 130 is probably the minimum you want. If you have Nahido or Baiju, this is like perfect. Since I'm using Yayao, I could do with a little bit more in some scenarios. It just depends how many white particles we get. Uh, do have him level 80 on the little Inazuma sword because I didn't have a white sing at the time and no sword billets. Now, I don't have him on the 4-piece gold, uh, Guild of Dreams, because my 4-piece really isn't that good. So, I'm actually running him on 2-piece, two 2-piece, two which isn't too bad, relatively speaking. It's just, you know, our best substats on these, so I might as well use them. Now, for our talents, we do have him triple crowned, luckily, because, you know, loved using Al Haytham. Also, just when it comes to his pieces, you know, it's sort of the regular build. Uh, please ignore my sand, it's horrible. Goblet, and there's the hat. Now, just... Quickly, really quickly, other characters on our team, 30k HP on our Yao Yao and 129ER. I only have her on a level 40 Black Tassel because I have no more, like, no spare pole arms on my account, so whoopsies. Uh, Cookie, uh, 776 EM, basically all you need her for, just, you know, stack full EM and get a lot of Hyper Bloom damage with her. Our Zhongli, just a regular shield bot build, 51k HP with Black Tassel. And then when it comes to our Ayaka, our other main DPS, we have around 51 crit rate and 227 crit damage. This turns into 87 crit rate against enemies without cryo on them or that are not frozen. If they either have cryo applied to them or are frozen, this turns into 102 crit rate, but yeah. So Ayaka builds pretty nice, 127 ER. Considering we have R5 Aminoma, that's more than enough for energy, as you could probably tell during the video. Trust me, Aminoma is a really good free-to-play weapon for Ayaka. Now, now, obviously, like I said, 4-piece managed to stay build, just to make sure she has a bit more create against enemies who can't be frozen, like the Hydro Tulpa. If you can freeze every enemy in the chamber, you should go Blizzard Strayer. And if you're not playing her with Farina, you'd also want to go Blizzard Strayer. But if you're playing her with Farina, and you're going against a little single target, you can put Marge to say on her. And then we have her triple crown as well, just like our Alhaven. Now when it comes to our Farina, we have around 64 crit, 180 crit damage, 220 ER, she is the only Hydro on this team, so that's just in case. Considering the fact we have 3 Favonius weapons on the team, we probably don't need to, but oh well. Once again, just a standard Farina build, HP, HP crit on Golden Troop, and her talents are 2910, don't really need to level up her normal attacks. When it comes to our Mika, he is on 30k HP, 195 ER. Quite a bit of curate just so that he can proc uh, the Favonius and then just have him on Noblesse. And when it comes to our Kaza, he is on 800 DM, once again on Favonius, full piece Veridescent as you would expect, and Triple Crown. But yeah, that's it for our character builds and for this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. If you do, be sure to subscribe when it comes to future videos coming out. Dr. Ratio will be out soon in Honkai Star Rail, so there will be a video coming out on him soon. I will also have more Spiral Abyss videos, those are in the works. And yeah, that's all from me for now. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you guys next time.